Mbeli Bihari Hili Kotel. We give you glory, God. We honor you. We magnify you. The kingdom of God is here to magnify your name, Father. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of honor. There's none like you. Hallelujah. You are glorious. You are king today. You are mighty. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise his name. Hallelujah. We're going to be here all day, so let's get started now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's roar in this place. King Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time and this season. We thank you for this season, God. When revival will hit the land. Hallelujah. Is anybody in agreement that it's time for a revival? It's time for a stirring. God. It's time to see the glory of God like never before. Hey, God, we worship you. We give your name the glory. Come on, magnify him. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. This is corporate today. This is corporate today. We need your assistance. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. You are worthy, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, let's magnify our king. Oh, the Lord is in trouble. Hallelujah. Jesus, we magnify you, God. You are worthy, Lord. He's worthy. Hallelujah. I see a wind going to blow through this place today. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Magnify the King. Whoa, hallelujah. Come on, there's a wind coming in right now. Magnify the King. Hey. Oh God, we give you glory. Lord, we decrease. And we pray for your presence to increase in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel his presence. Come on.
God. You already are blowing in the room, Father. And Lord, we want you to know that we decrease. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you increase in this place. Take over. Do what you desire. Hallelujah. Do what you desire today. This is your house. This is your house, Father. And we thank you for this time and this season. We thank you for meeting us here. Holy Spirit, we thank you for meeting us here. Let there be a collision of heaven on earth. Let there be a collision of heaven on earth today. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
I don't I don't know I don't know who it is but before you go home somebody God is gonna break a serious depression off of you I see somebody being loose from the grips of depression hallelujah and these are the type of atmospheres you want to worship in because there's certain atmospheres the enemy cannot rest on your back he cannot rest on your mind hallelujah but he has to go and depression will be loosed and broken hallelujah during this meeting Hallelujah. This, I hear the Lord saying that this is a sound. There's a sound that is going on. This is why it is continuing. We can't go on anymore because God is saying it's time to release a sound. There's a new sound that is shifting us into the new season. And God is saying, let the sound come forth. Listen, it's a sound of dominion. This is our earth. This is our territory. This is our land. It's a sound that is going forth and it's taken over. It's taken over where illegal occupants have been taking over and we are coming in and releasing a sound, a sound of dominion, a sound of takeover, a sound of authority, a sound of power, a sound of inheritance, a sound of heirs. It's a sound that is going forth and we're treading the ground and the sound that is going forth it is telling the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness and high places that the owners of the land have now stepped in and we're taking back our land we're taking back our home we're taking back our children we're taking back our mind we're taking back our authority we're taking back our grounds we're taking back our health we're taking back our mind back from depression, from oppression, from sickness and disease, from poverty, from lack, from want and need. And there's a sound that we we have to release. The king is here because, my friends, we're here. The sound, is the sound of ambassadors, the sound of kingdom citizens, the sound that sounds like nothing this earth has ever heard. And Shout the sound! 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 Sh
of why we are here 2018 God gave us a mandate to gather prophets and prophetic people in our house to begin to start praying for our nation praying for our church praying for the ecclesia not knowing what will be happening in the future we just begin to start praying praying for the government praying for revival praying for awakening praying for our personal lives and we didn't stop took it to London, we've, we've taken it to Washington, and we just begin to pray for our nation. So now God said, I want you to go to certain cities, begin to pray over that city, and begin to pray over the church and what's going to be happening. 
in these times and in this season that God will release revival throughout the earth. Hallelujah. And God has gathered us here today. This time he told me to bring in some apostolic voices, which I'm excited about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord. And I'll give the introductions now so that we can just move forward. Because after this, we're going to go into intercession. The heartbeat of this is intercession. intercession. We want to pierce heaven. We want heaven to know that we need his glory in this hour. We need him to change some things in this hour. We are embarking on World War III. So I just thought it was so prophetic that God would have us here praying in this particular season, in this particular time. We're not just at war naturally, but we're at war spiritually. And we are on the brink of revival. It doesn't matter how it looks in the world. We are on the brink of the greatest revival known to man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So for this particular assignment, God told me to bring in Dr. White to have him speak. He is to me an amazing kingdom hidden gem that the world needs to hear. He is here with his wife, Pastor Kena White, another great vessel of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I have here these two global amazing vessels. Now, I, I was supposed to bring them to us for years. And then all types of stuff happened. Pandemic, things would just continuously happen where I couldn't bring them in. And I'm sure they were through with me because I kept giving them all these promises. <laughs> and so when I said, when I go to Baltimore, I'm going to bring them to Baltimore for the Praying with the Prophets. And one of the reasons that I chose to bring them for Praying with the Prophets, I don't know if Dr. Tracy remembers, but we had, we had a Praying with the Prophets. I can't remember which location. And she said, I would love to be a part of that, Prophet. I said, absolutely. And this is the time and the season. And these are great global vessels from Colorado. So anytime I'm there going to see my mother, I have a powerful church that I can attend. <laughs> and they are powerful vessels that preach all around the world. We have here um, Prophetess Michelle. God bless you. We have here Pastor Willis, my brother and friend, my big brother. We have here Dr. Elizabeth Willis sitting down. And their son, who is probably taller than me now, Samuel. Hallelujah. And we have the BOTD family. You are welcome here. As you can see, we move by the Spirit. We have my mother here. Hallelujah. It's been great having her here. She's been here a little over a year now. I don't really get to see her. I get to see her like once a year. She'll be going to Colorado soon. Hallelujah. And we have my beautiful wife. <laughs> Pastor Janice. Prophetess Janice. Dr. Janice. And we have all of you honor all of you. No one is left out of receiving honor. It takes a family to go on. So we're going to open up an intercession. And after that, we're just going to, we just had worship. So we're just going to bring the word. We're going to flow with God. And after this session, we're going to have Dr. Tracy. You can see she's, fi she's fired up. She's ready. <laughs> she's ready. Hallelujah. So Minister Jackie, you can begin to come. And as we're engaging in prayer, we want everyone, you can walk around. We're all going to engage in intercession and be praying together and warring together. you, oh God, that you will come, oh God, and you, Holy One, you will rest upon this house, Father God. Father, as we intercede, yes, Father, that oh God, that the chains will break from your people. So, Father, we ask you, oh God, to move in this house. Have your way in this house, God. Have your way in this house, God. 
Andi sundi la 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 boshata ha. Andi ni ni akura mama masata. So we thank you, oh living God. He said, "Oh la boshi ande la la besate." Holy one, we praise you, oh God. We exalt your name, God, because you are the living God. Your word is powerful, Father God. So we thank you today, God. Hallelujah. We ask you, oh God, to come, Lord God, to rest upon your people today. La boshande la la bokoto ha. Randi ni ni asundo ha. Your name is Holy One, we thank you today, God. Hallelujah! As we pray, oh God, and then we pray, God, for the repentance, oh God. But this is a time and season, God, that you have called us, God. Hallelujah! To begin to go forth, oh God, that your people, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you, oh God. In 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, it says, It's my people who are called by my name. Hallelujah. Will humble themselves. Hallelujah. And pray and seek my face. Hallelujah. Turn from their wicked ways. Your word says, Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land, oh God. So we thank you, God. Hallelujah. As we begin to pray, God, and we intercede for this land, for this nation, God, for the Oh God, we thank you, God. Hallelujah, that the chains, oh God, that the enemy have put upon your people, God, they will begin to fall, God. They will begin to break, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, as we call forth, oh God, repentance in this time, God. In the name of Jesus, oh that the people of God, hallelujah, will turn from their wicked ways, God. And they will begin to seek you and begin to cry out, God. Hallelujah. You say you will heal, God, and you will heal our land, God. So we call on the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus that is above every name that celebrates Shatta. So we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Your greatness, oh God. We worship you, oh God. Your word says in Matthew 3 and 8. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. He celebrates all the repentance, God. Send forth the spirit of repentance. In the land, God, that it may bear fruit, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, let the repentance break out in this nation, God. Hallelujah. Because we have sinned against you, God, and only you, Lord God. So let the people who hear God begin to fall on their knees and cry out to you, God, the living God. So begin to cry out to the We cry out to God. For he He's the only one. Ha. He's Salabashete. He's Salabashete. He's the only one. Ha. Oh, Halabashete. He's the only one that knows. Ha. He's the only one that sees. Oh, God. He's the only one that can change. Change come by the living God. So we thank you today, Lord God. Oh, your mighty name, God. Oh, send the spirit of repentance. For it's John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins. Hallelujah. And to cleanse us from all those righteousness. So, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, O oh God. Father, forgive us, O oh God, for every sin, God. Every sin that we thought, God. Those that we know, God. And those that we do not know, God. Father, I ask you, O oh God, to forgive us, O oh God. And what Wash us, oh God. Make us fresh, oh God. Make us new, oh God. By your spirit, oh God. So we thank you, Lebeshete. Don't begin the Lebeshete. Open up your mouth, Lebeshete. Open up your mouth, Lebeshete. He and the Lebeshete. His name be as Lebeshete. For he is the one that will forgive sins. He rosend the Lebeshete. We thank you, oh God. Oh, Lebeshete, Lebeshete. Oh, we thank you, God. We thank you, oh God. Oh, Acts 2 and 38 says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. Oh, we bless you, God. Hey, yes, thank you, God, that you have washed us and you have forgiven us, oh God. So we thank you today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Holy One. You said today, hey, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He's son of a shete. Seek him of a 
Shete, Ramana de Beshete, Rondo Sataha. So we do not harden our hearts, God, but we thank you today, God, that you are the one God. Hallelujah. Oh, they've given us life, and you've given us abundant life. That we live and move, yes, God, and we have a being in you today, God. So we thank you, oh God. We worship you, God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We love you today, God. We thank you, oh God. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. We honor you today, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. 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 Glory to Jesus. Jesus, glory to Jesus. We war a good war. We fight a good fight. Hallelujah. We get between the porch and the altar. We get between the porch and the altar. We cry out for America. God, this land is your land. It was founded by the principles of God. He gave us so command. So we command the legislative activity from the kingdom of God manifest here on earth as it is in heaven. Revelations 11 and 15. For the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord in Christ. And he shall reign forever. We command Every hata the yopo, every variant yata of COVID yakata, you got to bow at the footstool of Jesus. Because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we decree and we declare. Healing the To the bones of the earth. We command the I command the rivers to meet. Come on and I pray hallelujah for the universal church I pray for the body of Christ come together we reclaim it oh we go after the kingdom agenda we go after the souls of men deliver from every addiction, deliver from every sickness, deliver. Oh, hallelujah! We overwhelm the enemy by the blood of the Lamb in the word of our testimony. We kill we Strengthen your leaders, God. Breathe on them from the left to the right to the front to the back. May they take over. Take courage. Oh, Only be strong and courageous for the Lord our God. He wins. He wins. He wins. So we win. So we win. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, rain in this place. Breathe. We welcome you. Greater dimension. Greater glory. Greater soundness. Greater peace. Greater love. Greater joy. Greater love than this. That no man than this lay down their lives for their friends. We lay it down so you can pick it up. Rise! 
in the name of Jesus. You cause Israel to win mighty battles by saying the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. We march like soldiers in uniform. We say the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. Endeavor, 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 endeavor. Oh God, quicken, 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 make alive according to your word, according to your loving kindness, according to your tender mercies. God, in the name of Jesus, oh, breathe on every musician, breathe on every singer. Sounds of heaven flow right now. We believe in the promises of God. They are yea and amen. What a privilege it is for your sons and daughters to gather. Ah, this was pregnant from the kingdom for all eternity. God said, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I was waiting for this day. Now, let it stop. Let go of the rise. 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 And his enemies be scattered. Be scattered. Be scattered. Be scared! Be scared! And I will see another Bakaya. He is a Bosa. He is a Bese. We are Toboho. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We come before his cross with praise. We bless his high and holy name. He can never see another Beki de Loboho. He is a Besuma. He can never see another Loboho. He is a Behe. Oh, bask, bask, bask in the mighty presence. He is a Beki de Loboko. He has made us glad. Hallelujah. Let the joy of the Lord spring up like rivers. And the Basuria spring up like rivers. Can I must see another Behe? Oh, spring up like rivers, Kerabosie. Spring up like rivers, 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 rivers. Yes, I'm a Bokorian day. I command the rivers from Revelation, the great Euphrates. Flow, flow through here, flow through here, flow through here. Oh, let it blow, let it blow, let it blow, let it blow like rain, let it blow like rain, let it blow like rain. Hey, yes, God. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name, God. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Yeah, 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 yes, God. We thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace, God. Thank you, God, for gathering this remnant, God. We thank you, God. Oh, mighty one, holy one. Oh, Jesus, mighty God. We thank you for this time together, God. We thank you for this mighty fellowship among your remnant, God. We thank you, God, for we have the ultimate honor of entering into your presence, God. Holy One, thank you for your mercy and your grace, God. Oh, Jesus. Yes, God, we thank you, God. Father, we know that you have formed the end before the beginning, God. Father, we know that we're just watching this thing play out before you. We know that your power, one small measure of your power, is more powerful than a million nuclear bombs. Therefore, we do not walk in the fear of war. We do not walk in the fear of man. But we stand before you, God, and petition you, God, that we might enter in and ask you, God, for the victory in every matter. God, we know, God, that 
your word says that when two or more are gathered in your presence, that you will surely be in their midst. And we thank you for letting us be in your presence right now. God, we know that your word is more powerful than the United Nations. Your word is more powerful than the IMF. Your word is more powerful than Gog or Magog. And we thank you, God, for the victory, God. Every world government, God, we ask you right now, God, to let your power and your glory continue to reign over this globe. We will not fear the shaking. We will not fear the quaking. We will not fear any worldly upheaval. For we know, God, that these things must come to pass. For you are soon to come. And we ask you, Father, help us, God, to redeem the time. Father, for the latter day harvest is great, God. We ask you, Father, to empower us with supernatural power, supernatural ideas, supernatural innovation and resources. God, to facilitate this end time harvest. Father, we ask your Lord to let your presence and your power reign and expand among us higher and higher, God. Let your spirit flow, God. Oh, Jesus, freely reign among us, oh God. Let your power flow, God. Let your love flow, God, amongst your people, God. Let us be one, God. Let us be one, God. God, send the spirit of unity, God, in this end time. Break every barrier, every mental disorder, every depression, God. Break it from over your people, God. Let us come into the unity of the faith, God. Send a mighty revival. Bring your churches together, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this time, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Oh, we worship you, God. We thank you, God. For you are the healer. We thank you, oh God, this morning, Lord. For you sent forth your word. And there was healing on your word, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing forth your healing in the land. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we worship you. We worship you for healing this morning. We thank you, oh God, for you are Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha. You are the healer. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes, We thank you, Jesus. We thank you this morning, God. We come before you, Lord. And we humble ourselves, oh God. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for taking away all manner of sickness and disease. This morning, oh God. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord. For there's healing. There's healing in the land. There's healing in the land, oh God, because you sent us here, Lord. You sent us here, Lord. Oh, so we thank you, Lord. Oh, Gloria Sakanda Labosa. Oh, yes, God, Yanabakanda. Oh, we pull down all men of sickness and disease today, God. We come against high blood pressure. We come against low blood pressure today. We come against sugar diabetes. Oh, yes, God, in the name of Jesus. We come against cancer. We come against cancer, God. Yes, God, today, Lord. We pull it down, God. We thank you, Lord. We put your word on it today, God. We put your word on it, God, because we know your word is it, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing. For there's healing. 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 There's healing in the land. Oh, glory. Oh, yes, God. We thank you, Lord, for you said in your word, oh God, nevertheless, I will bring healing. I will bring healing to it. And I will heal all manner of diseases. Oh, yes, God, because we know the devil is a liar. He knew I was going to pray for healing today. So he tried to stop me last night. He tried to stop me all night. But the power that's in the world brought me through this morning. I might not be able to wear the heels I wanted to wear, but I said, God, God, I'm going to go because you sent me. 
you sent me. He wanted to stop me. He knew my assignment this morning. But he's a liar. He's a liar because I can jump. I can run. I can walk. I can claim the healing. We are healed. We are healed because Jesus said it. And when he says something in his word, you better take it. Because it's real. It's a sure foundation. You can stand on it today. Speak to it. Speak to it. Speak to it, whatever it is. Because God said we are healed. Because we are kingdom people. Hallelujah. We are kingdom people. And there is no sickness in heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I can run. I can lift my feet. Hallelujah. Because we praise a God that there is healing. Healing on his wings. Healing on his wings this morning. Oh, so give him joy again. Worship him for your healing. It's in the worship. It's in the worship. It's in the worship. It's in the worship. He said, worship me. Those who worship me in spirit and truth. You are healed. My God, won't he do it? Yes, he will. That's my motto. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We thank you, God, for touching this land. We thank you for sending us forth to come to Baltimore to send your word. Because there's power in your word. And it's going to go forth. And it's going to accomplish what you sent it out to do. Woo! Glory! Hey! Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! Lord, we come, dear God, to pull down every stronghold. Every stronghold, everything that would try to exalt itself above your name. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus, because it cannot and it will not succeed. So we're here to do war in the heavenly. We're here to tear down every vain imagination, everything that would try to exalt itself above the name of our Jesus. For our Jesus is Lord, our Jesus is sovereign, our Jesus is omnipotent, and here is no other name above the name of Jesus. That every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we come against the enemy right now. Hallelujah. Every tear must shut down, every fear of division, every fear of schism, every fear of trying dear God, to invade, infiltrate. Hallelujah. You cannot have your way. We claim this entire weekend for the kingdom of God. But greater is he that is in us. Hallelujah. And therefore with us. Hallelujah. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. But we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against every principality that was trying to exalt. He said, try, try, try. It cannot succeed in the name of Jesus. For great is our Lord. Our difference is our God. And the greater one lives in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank you, God. We thank you for the territory. We thank you for the land. We thank you for your faithful, committed people who are here today, standing by your word in the name of Jesus. And we worship you, hallelujah. And we magnify you, hallelujah. And we glorify you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, there is no name above the name of Jesus. That everything gets done. And we come back against that spirit of Ukraine today. That spirit of murder, hallelujah. That spirit of murder and lies and deception in the political offices. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask God to change the heart. Because the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord, hallelujah. So, Father, we ask you, dear God, to give them your mind, hallelujah. So, whatever they do in the back offices, Father, you will expose them right now in the name of Jesus and tear down. Demolish every lie, every stronghold in Ukraine and all the political offices. Now, in the name of Jesus, for the greater world, hallelujah, hallelujah, let thy will be done, hallelujah, let thy will be done, hallelujah, let thy will, thy plans, thy purposes that you have for your people be done in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. 
for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll prevail the name of Jesus. We'll go forth the name of the word of Jesus. In our Santa, we triumph for the greater one lives in us. And we triumph because we're in the greater one. Hallelujah. To be courage. Nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. No matter what's going on, nothing can separate you from his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I'll be with you. Hallelujah. Until the end. Hallelujah. And there's no ending in Christ Jesus. So thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word, your promises. We thank you for tearing down every stronghold. We thank you for going to Ukraine and all those other nations there, God. And to turn that situation around now in his holy name. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Can we put them hands together? Come on, let's magnify the presence of the Lord. Come on, come on, let's magnify the presence of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's praise King Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise King Jesus. Let's praise the King. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, God. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You are worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Woo. He's in the midst of us. We're going to bring up the man of God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Ah, hey! Scott, I'm going to let him come up under this presence. It's an honor and privilege to bring Dr. Richard White. He's a prolific teacher, a powerful preacher, prayer warrior, psalmist of the Lord writer if you name it god has stamped him <laughs> with approval <laughs> hallelujah so man of god you could come he's going to deliver the word of god and take us further hallelujah we've been led by the spirit today all type of things change but we're going with the spirit of god hallelujah to God. We give you glory, God. We give you praise. Moko Shatanaba. Mighty God, Mighty God. Mighty God, Mandala Hoshata Dabaya, Mighty God, hmm. Mando Shata Labasia, Our hands are lifted. <laughs> I need you to breathe in this breakthrough. <laughs> I 
I need you to breathe in this breakthrough. I need you to breathe in this breakthrough. Take a breath. Be relieved in this glory. Be relieved in this glory. Be relieved in this glory. Glory to God. I'm going to give honor. But before I do, I need you to lift your hands and I want you, I need you. I need you to put a demand and make a request. Not for something just that is new for you, but is complete. purposed put a demand there in your heart in your heart in your heart This is the kind of anointing that God uses me in to be able to settle. There's a settling that is happening for us across. The glory and the atmosphere has been set for us today for a settlement. (laughs) Your fight is not going to go unrewarded. It's not going to go unrewarded. But you need to put a demand. You need to make a demand. Put it in your your spirit, in your heart. Only God can hear it. Hear what the Lord is saying to you. Hear what he's speaking to you. You don't even have to utter it, just receive it. I'm closing my mouth because this glory is so prevalent. We just need to hear the Lord for a moment. takes place here. Glory is released here. Supernatural favor is released here. Bondages are broken here. Curses are removed here. I just want to set the precedent. This, This is the favor of what God has for us. Do you hear that? That is the sound of what will limit you today. Nothing. (laughs) 
nothing will stop you. Nothing. This is the peace of God. And in this place, I give you peace. And none shall make you afraid. <laughs> That's right. There's some glory being laid out. There's some glory being laid out. Go ahead. And, and when it gets in your spirit, then raise your voice. I would challenge even maybe five of you to just walk around here and begin to go and just usher in your next exit. I'm talking about you were bound, you were tired of waiting. Yeah. And you've made a decision. Come on, I need you to snatch yourself away from the lack. I need you to snatch yourself away. Mandala. That's right. Some of you have already decided you need some extra space. And if you need to lay hands on some of these walls and some of these chairs and claim it as your next moving, as your next space, then God, oh! then the favor, the favor is released on you now. It's not just any kind of favor. Some favors granted. But the favor that I'm talking about that's in this house right now is irrevocable. <laughs> and you, you can't take it back. It's been released. I'm blessed. And no man can curse it. It's irrevocable. Yeah, yeah. You're here now. <laughs> You're here now. You're here now. You're here now. And God has agreed with you to end the war. You're here now. I think the Lord is trying to get you to get somewhere and maybe he's starting from the end from the beginning. Maybe if you were just going to fall into this and not wonder if we're going to take this text yet. I need you to go and be the text for a moment. Live this text out. Live it out. Live out this anointing. Don't wait for me to speak it on you. Live it out of your sin. Oh, it's going to be different. Thank you. Oh, it's going to be different. Thank you, Bishop. It's going to be different. I need you to lift some different hands. Not the hands that's waiting for it. I need you to lift the hands that's pulling it down. These are different hands. There's a different voice. surrounds you today he surrounds you he 
surrounds you. He surrounds you. He surrounds you. He surrounds you. <laughs> you didn't hear me. <laughs> he surrounds you. <laughs> oh, God. He surrounds you. <laughs> Just look. <laughs> He's there. <laughs> Your challenge. He's there. Your trouble. He's there. Your victory, he's there. Your prayer request, he's there. Your fasting, he's there. Your sacrifice. If I made my bed, I won't do it today. If I made my bed in hell. The Lord is here to heal. He's not just here to manifest. He's here to heal and manifest. He's here to heal you. I feel some lifting out of my back. It was in the small of my back. But I might call that. Whoever it was that had that pain in the back and is out of your back, I need you to leap for joy right now. I want you to go and just begin to go and get it. That's right. That's who I am. That, that's right. That's right. My The healing is here. The glory is here. The relief is here. There's no sense in waiting. Why don't you leap into it? Move into it. Jump in this river. I heard you, Apostle. I watch you sometimes every week. I can jump in this river. That's right. Listen, this ain't got nothing to do with what's on these notes. But I need you to lift your hands for a moment. And I want us to get ready to go into a dark room. The man of God is making sure that this gets recorded. And it's the Lord gave me a quick vision of us getting into a dark room. Getting right into the dark room back in the day before there was automatic cameras in order for you to be able to go and develop your pictures. You have to go and be able to snap the picture and then you'd have to be able to go and get some negatives. And then you'd have to go into a door. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd have to go into a door with a red light over top. And that was to indicate that no one could get in until the process was over. And you would have to hand your hand on the handle. You'd have to open the door. You'd have to go inside. And the first thing you'd have to do, you'd have to pull out your negatives. I need you to do me a strong favor. If there's any doubt, hallelujah, if there's any measure of God not doing, because I still feel the healing in my body. I don't know if you feel it or not, but there's some healing that's going on, and it's going to be permanent. This ain't adrenaline. This is anointing.
That's right. You've been waiting for that one. And before when you were dancing, it wasn't dancing like that. Because this time, not only are you going to get it, woman, you're going to keep it. I'm tired of getting it. And I can't keep it. That sounds like a negative to me. I need you to pull your negatives out of your spirit. Pull the negatives out of your mind. Pull the negatives out of your ear. Pull some negatives out of your knees. Pull some negatives out of the small of your back and put it in. Ah. Anybody got some negatives? Anybody got some negatives? They told you it couldn't get paid? You need to pull that negative out. It's not in your budget. Pull that negative out. It's too much for you and it's too soon. Pull that negative out. I should tell you the rest of the story and then get to my scripture. If you have your negatives, once you were in the dark room, you take the negatives out and you get in, put them in some water. But it wasn't any kind of water. It's called solution. I need you to pull all them negatives out that tried to stop you from getting to voice of the dove, praying with the prophets. Because you're here now. It's over. If you want it to be over. What? If it's your season for it to be over. I'm not talking about winter. I'm not talking about spring. I'm not talking about summer. And I ain't talking about fall. I'm talking about the fifth season. That's due season. That's right. Winter, spring, summer, fall, due. That's it. It's grace. It's due season. Well, this is not no, this is not a visit. This is a habitation. We didn't come to have God visit us today. You came the to, you came to Baltimore to have a visit? No, if I'm going to be here, I might as well live here. You take these negatives, put them in the solution, and you let the solution develop the negatives. I'm trying to get you delivered from the depression that the apostle went and spoke about 40 minutes ago. Put your negatives in the solution and let the solution develop the negatives. Because solution has a way of turning things we cannot see into things we can remember for the rest of our lives. And once the picture is developed. They didn't put their hand in the solution. I need you to stop putting your hands where God doesn't want you to put them. There's an apparatus. Tweezers. 
and you put it inside the solution and pull the negatives out and the negatives are no longer negatives, they're now film. It's now a picture. What do we do? Do we walk out? No. They used to have a clothesline inside of that room and they would take the negatives or the pictures and get some clothespins and hang the pictures up until they dried. Could you lift your hands and let the Lord dry some tears and some emotional barriers? Go ahead, just let them wipe. Hang it up. Hang it up. Your hands are symbolic of a cross right now. I need you to hang it up. Put your hands up and say, look, Lord, no hands. I'm not even putting my hand in it anymore. I'm not even putting my opinion or my experience in it. Oh, I ain't putting my churchers in it. I ain't putting my realization or none of that nonsense, Lord. Look, Lord, no hands. You do the work. Let your wind blow my tears out of my socket. And then, you take it off the line when it's dry, and you put it in an envelope, and you flip the switch off, and you walk out, and you take what was negative and put it in the right alignment. I give God honor and glory today. And no, you don't have to clap. This is not a clap moment. Lift your hands. We give God honor for his glory and his power and his presence. We give God glory and honor for his power and his presence. And we give God glory and honor for the angel of this house, Apostle Dion Neesmith. I know you're going to clap by accident, but you'll get it right. I want you to go and end up going and just giving God glory. Now, the applause that I need, could you open some applause with your mouth? This is what we're going to have to get into before I preach this message and get out of here. I need you to applaud God with your mouth. Sometimes our hands, we do too much with it. I need you to applaud him with your mouth because the Bible says that I'll praise you seven times a day. Just, 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 say, just for the word, just for the word, just say, Lord, I'm gonna praise you seven times a day. Applaud with your mouth, applaud with your mouth, applaud with your mouth, applaud with your mouth, applaud with your praise, applaud with your worship. One down, six to go. Let's praise him seven times today. Seated for this warm up. <laughs> we give God glory for the visionary of Voice of the Dove and praying with the prophets, Apostle Dion Neesmith, his rib, Dr. Janice Neesmith, all of the. Oh, yes, right now you can. Dad, you done did it now. Go ahead, clap. Come on, come on. The pastoral staff, the elders, minstrels, we give God glory for them. All fivefold gifts and ministries, we honor you. We honor you, prophet, woman of God. We honor you, all of you, prophet, governmental ministry, congregational ministry. Well, I thank God for Rhema Fellowship International Ministries being with us today. Sister Liz Ramos and Prophet Nikki White and Minister Pam Townsend, glory to God. Um, Bishop Charles Waters came from Word of Faith Christian Center. He's here in Baltimore, Maryland, but he didn't find a robbery to go and be here. We'll be with him tomorrow as he does ordinations. But certainly, um, I couldn't go and finish without acknowledging a vision of strength, beauty, consistency, and perfection as it relates to God supplying my need. I 
I think you got it. Yeah. Pastor Keno yeah. Flanoy White, we love and appreciate you. She's the reason we got down here. She drove us down here. And I plan on having her drive us back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Have your seats. I got to make this stick. I got to make this quick. I thank you for this privilege. It's a privilege to be here. And when we knew that Apostle was doing this, because we share whatever it is Apostle is doing, if Apostle claps his hands on Facebook, I share it. I just hit it. <laughs> I'd be like, everybody need to see him clap. Everybody. What about Shantana? And then I start praying in tongues. I'd be like, whatever the Apostle does. Is it not right? Anything your leader does, everyone should know about it. Voice of the dove, that was weak. I said, anything. Any picture Janice Neesmith takes, I, I love it. <laughs> I don't care. Then I pray in tongues over that too. I'll be like, that about Shanda. I didn't close this thing and it still is doing its own little thing. But I'm going to hit cancel. Okay, I think I got it. Thank you. How many of you feel a lift in the atmosphere? I want you to have this atmosphere because I want you to have it with expectation. Expectation of what, Richard White? Expectation of these two particular scriptures, and then I'm going to go and give you what it is the Lord gave me today. We're coming from two basic and very familiar um, portions of scripture. It is Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14, which I will read last. But I'd like for us to start out with Psalm 61 and 1. Very, very familiar portions of Scripture. Psalm 61 and 1, we'll go to that first. And then we'll go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. When you have Psalm 61 and 1, just say, I have it. Amen. Glory to God. So Psalm 61 and 1, it says this. Are we ready? Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. This is the part that I need you to get because when I share what God is going to give me, I don't want you to get the wrong thing based on what he told me. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I'll repeat it again. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me. To the rock that is higher. Someone say higher, please. Higher. Say it a little louder with some fire. To lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Thank you. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower. Someone say tower. Against the foe. We go now to Philippians chapter 3. Here's what it says. Verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things. Somebody say things. Which are behind. And reaching. Someone say reaching. Forth. Try, do it now. When you say it this time, I need you to put your hand out and do it as if you are going somewhere beyond where you're at. Say, reaching forth unto those things which are before. Okay, finish it with me. Say, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Say that again, high calling. I need you to see the pattern now so I won't have to preach as long. Reaching forth towers high 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 calling 
I want you to have that in your mind. This is the season of the elevation. High calling. Uh, uh, let's be specific. High calling of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you've given us. We confess and receive that your people are growing, waxing strong in spirit and in wisdom. And your grace is upon us. Creating us a clean heart. Thank you, Father, for giving us the opportunity to go and give seed and water to your sheep. And you will add increase. We believe that we receive it. And we shall have it. Lord, let us have a, another example and manifestation of your reigning and where you reign. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. High calling. Towers, strong towers, high calling, reaching forward, reaching out. All of these are measures of God wanting you to get to your next level. Notice the physicality in the scripture. That even in times like this, and I know I'm going off a little bit, I'm going to give you the topic in a minute. But what I wanted to go and end up sharing with you is that in times like these, we need to be able to understand not only what the Bible says, but why the Bible says it. And part of that is we need to understand, and it's for those of you that know, I'm just going to remind you, that even in these two bases of scripture, we got a lot of Greek going on today. Why do I even mention about Greek? Because when we begin to go and take a look at the scripture, there's a difference between um, what the Lord says in Hebrew and what he says in Greek. What is it? Well, Hebrew is more of a, a mental level opportunity. It's metaphysical. It's about the mind. And so Hebrew, when you start going and reading in Hebrew, it's usually about someone that concentrated, meditated on something, constructed a thing, and then they had it in their mind. But then the Greek comes to pass, and this is where we're at in Psalm 61, and we're also in, in Philippians chapter 3. But Paul and David starts talking about not only hearing and meditating on God, but taking action on what is in them. And they begin to go and take action on what is in them by reaching forward. They begin to take action by what is going on to by pressing. They begin to go and take action on what it is that God has already instilled in them. Notice they're not waiting for it to happen. It's just that the problem with the church is we don't know the difference between Greek and Hebrew. Sometimes you ain't got to meditate. Sometimes you just got to act on it. So, there are times where, now that we have the Greek in mind, the Greek paints a picture of words in action. And there are some places where God has given us his word in action, but some things, we read it. Some things have restricted us and held us back from everything. Which brings me to my topic. The topic is, the room isn't right. The room isn't right. By the time this session is over, my desire and prayer with God's help is to usher us into a new realm of divine advancement and expansion and to actively abandon emotional and spiritual mediocrity through our partnership with Jesus Christ and a hunger for him with an attitude of reflection. Now that seems like a tall order, but what I've really told you is I want us to repent for thinking small. <laughs> so 
So let me begin by saying that, number one, wherever we are with God presently, no matter where you're at in your walk, it does not really make a difference. Wherever we are with God presently, it is worth reminding you, number one, that God wants you and I to go to another level. We, why, why would he want that? Because, number one, we have more horizons to view. We have more lives to impact. <laughs> and more joint ventures to partner with the Lord Jesus Christ along with proof that kingdom partnership actually works. Richard White, you have no proof. No, that's not true. Mark 16, 20, and they went forth. Didn't we say reaching forth? We went, for the, so let's do it again. They went forth. Now, I, 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 no, I shouldn't say that. I'll wait on. I, they went forth and preached everywhere. Here's the part. The Lord working with them. We are extremists in our mind. Because in our mind, we believe either one of two things. Number one, I will take care of it. Or number two, God will take care of it. There is a lack of accountability at either juncture. If I take care of it, I'm only being Hebrew. I have a plan. I devise things. I construct them. Haven't you constructed something in these last 30 days? Did, they, did it really work out? But didn't it, did it stop you from devising something else? <laughs> well, mancha. That is to say, oh my goodness. See, I'll pray, I'll pray in tongues and interpret. What happens is, <laughs> we're extremists. We either want all of God or none of God, but we don't want partnership. How else can God manifest his glory without our bodies? How else can God give witnesses to his healed bodies and dead being raised emotionally or physically? Um, how can God give restoration to people who are in poverty and in lack and in deficit unless there's a partnership? God has all the resources. We have all the source God needs. We're going to have to come together because the Lord wants to work with us, not for us. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, you'll abuse it. And what is happening is, is that the rooms where we have been in, where God was supposed to do something, the rooms aren't right because we won't partner. We are extremists. <laughs> we want it all our way or all God's way. Any way you bless me. You see where all this way is getting us? And the Bible says there is a way. That seems right to a man. Problem is, at the end of it, it's destruction because we're either extremists of one or the other. I have so much to share. I got to get it out of here. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So what does that tell us? God not only wants to partner with you, but when he makes a deposit, when he makes donations, when he gives to you and he grants you, he wants to leave a receipt. There's no reason that we should preach, pray, prophesy, or do anything. And God's glory is not a receipt after we speak. While we speak. Didn't you see folk jumping, getting their back up? The, the glory of God done hit them already. I don't tell, why do you need to lay hands when you can just lay levels of glory? Your apostle teaches this. Your doctor and woman of God teaches this. The staff teaches this. The ministers teach this. The dancers dance it. It is a source of identity. I gotta hurry. I believe 
a major avenue that will allow us to operate at a level of partnership begins with the ministry of number one prayer and intercession. Here's what I want you to remember. Prayer is diverse and prayer is important. Hmm? Prayer is diverse and it's important. Again, another extreme because the room isn't right. We think just because people pray that that means automatically there's diversity in what they prayed. But we lack and fail to see the importance of whom we are praying to. <laughs> what are you talking about, Richard? How important is prayer anyway? Well, when a doctoral student in Princeton asked, what is there left in the world for original dissertation research, Albert Einstein replied, find out about prayer. <laughs> somebody, this is his quote, somebody must find out about prayer. In the most generic sense, I think prayer kind of goes like this. We send signals from a visible world to an invisible world with hopes that someone responds and in truth of the matter is every faith has a form of prayer. And that's why we need to make the distinction between what is important and what is diverse. My God is not only important to me. He has enough diversity to solve and supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. And it's not just important for me to pray, but in order for me to be more than what I am. I must embrace his diversity. If not, the room isn't right. Those prayers that people pray include requests for food and health and rain and victory and so on. As a matter of fact, the same people that are so committed to prayer because they think it's important but not necessarily versatile as it relates to righteousness, these same people will offer human sacrifices in an effort to gain a certain God's attention. Even atheists find ways to pray. During communism time in Russia, in Russia, there were some party stalwarts that kept something called a red corner. And it was placing a portrait of a God they went in worship named Lenin as their object of affection where the Christians used to keep their icons. So we even have Christians who are basically going and being at an extreme where they think prayer is important, but it's no sense in being versatile and hearing what it is that God says. I need you to get this if you don't get at least another two things out of me. I need you to understand this is the season and the time for us to graduate from just being discernible to being obedient. Is this helping you so far? Amen. Everyone thinks that just hearing God is enough. What happened to the good old days of obeying what you heard? I can hear God. I can hear God. So did Jonah. I can hear God. <laughs> I can hear God. So did Adam. I can hear God. <laughs> and even with all of their hearing, the room wasn't right. <laughs> Could I challenge you with something? Could I challenge you to do something? And Rhema, I'm about to say something you've heard before, but I need you to act surprised in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Liz, if you could just flip over that chair to your left and say these words. Oh my God, I can't believe he said. I want you to make a distinction. Praise him. Let's just speak. I want you to make a distinction. Between listening and hearing. Listening is low level discernment. Hearing entails responsibility. I want to 
hear from a God. My God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Richard, and your name right there. I want to hear from a God that not only when I hear from him, it's important to hear from him, but that I feel a responsibility. I feel responsible to pray. <laughs> you ever had a conversation with somebody and they said something so anointing and immediately you just wanted to go and just put the phone down and stretch out right there and say, Lord, I just want to get in your presence right here because I know this moment is right here. Do me a favor. Let's exercise. Lift your hands right there and get in a moment with God right now. Go, 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 go. Not just because it's important. But because I feel responsible when the glory comes in my mind. When the glory comes to heal my body. When the glory comes to move my pain. I feel a responsibility. I don't just want to listen to him. That's cable TV. I want to hear him. So what makes our prayer different from other believers? Because I just pointed out to you believers. So prayer is for believers. <laughs> what makes us different? What makes us different is our source of where our right standing is. The difference between the psychic and the prophet <laughs> The difference between the psychic and the prophet Is that the psychic can only repeat But the prophet can hear And if the prophet can hear something That's not conducive unto the evidence of life and godliness in the, in the room The prophet has the authority to be able to speak and change the atmosphere, dynamic, stratosphere, and outcome on the spot. And they're able to do it because the room isn't right. I don't have to repeat penalty. I can change circumstance. Prayer is universal because it speaks to a human need. And thankfully, the true and living God that we call on happens to know our need before we ask. God has the ability, the grace, and the power to restore us to right standing on this earth as it is the urgency of heaven that we not only cry for help, but we are put in line for higher heights after our rescue is completed. That only happens with a couple of things. Number one, we're going to have to admit that we need to be realigned. <laughs> we need to be realigned and we need to be refocused. Hmm? To be realigned is to have balance. To have focus is to get the picture. <laughs> and some people are balanced in not getting the bigger picture. Which happens to be one of the things that Paul was talking about forgetting. <laughs> so I'm going to try to speed this up and share with you that this is your season now to go and graduate To eliminating what you keep forgetting. I'm trying to get you free from this depression that the apostle mentioned 53 minutes ago. Forgetting those things, Debar, Hebrew, matters. Forgetting those matters 
that are behind. I got to speed it up. You will never get tomorrow's victory with today's memories. Go ahead, try it. You'll be there. But I won't. I'll move on because I know you're going to be stuck as an extremist. Anybody tired of being around extremists? One day they're actually with God, Pam, and then the next day they're gone. (laughs) You depend on them one moment to give you some prayer, and then the next day they get a little depressed and they ain't got nothing for you. And it's because they let things get in the way. Oh, I'm tired of these things. Oh, uh, these, these, they're not even people anymore. All they are are issues. Can I preach now? <laughs> they're not, you, you, and, and you know what's amazing? And I, I got to say this. Why is it that we feel that we are the people who are credible to go and raise bastard children who won't submit themselves to Father God? They won't submit to God, but you want to be their parent. You want to cover them. You want to get them out of trouble. You want to counsel them all night long. You want to be the hero. Beloved, there are no badges for these things. No churches, no television stations. God knows no cash apps. Because people want to suck you dry and wring you out and iron you up if you got the iron that they need to iron you up if they're able to iron because nobody trained them because they weren't capable of listening to nothing long enough to learn how to iron. So now you got to wring yourself out. Then you got to iron yourself out. Then you got to shake yourself out. Hang yourself up and say, come on, use me tomorrow. I'm tired of these things. after things I'm after signs these signs shall follow them that believe but these things happen to people who don't follow they will not partner and then you have to de-bastardize them and reintroduce them to Jesus and you go to the same church it's true bishop I'll share it later in the text. It's true. I'm tired of these things. We need to be realigned and refocused on the will of God for our lives. It's in prayer that we break silence and our words flow out of our deepest parts. It's because we need another portion of territory. The only reason you and I pray, how many minutes I got left? Am I messing up? All right. The only reason that we get a chance to go and pray is because the truth of the matter is what's inside of us needs to be heard, but it needs to be heard in a safe place. So we break the silence of nothing with the prayer and the sound. That's what the sound is for. Some people cry to sound, to sound holy and sound wonderful. I don't cry for that. I cry to break silence. (laughs) I cry to break silence. And when we break that silence, each time we interrupt the atmosphere with our copywritten voice pattern, I'll get back to that in a moment, we are searching for a place where our prayer can move from a humble request to a triumphant rejoicing. In other words, we're searching for another room. Why? Because the room isn't right. 
Before I show you how this works, let me tell you what happened to me. I'm talking to Pastor Kenneth, and there's some times where I get a chance to reach out to some people um, across the country and sometimes, you know, here and there, and I get a chance to share with them, and they come to me, and they talk to me about their business and their home and their family and the kids and the stuff and the things like this and da, da, da. Now, I do have some opportunities to have conversations with brothers that um, we got that, but I ain't talking about the brothers. I'm talking about the others. The others send the goal and come and, and their things, you know. The others go and come by, and sometimes they need you to go and end up going and reinforcing them and reestablishing them and realigning them and reconverting them. And I know I said this a few moments ago, but I need you to know what it feels like to heaven when you keep praying about that same person over and over again, and the Lord says, well, didn't you tell me about that already? When are you going to come out from among them and be separated? But you ain't going to do that. You know why? Because you think there's some glory in things. I want you to go and understand that when God God goes and starts to put this on you. It's because there are times where we get through those people and we need to understand clearly that number one, we need room. We need another room. I was telling Pastor Ken, I said, you know what? I'm tired of being used and I don't get it paid for it. I'm getting, I'm tired of going and giving advice and helping building churches and nobody wants to cast sow a seed. I'm tired of going and end up going, no, 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 you, well, my God, are you worried about the money? No, I'm not worried about the money, beloved. I'm worried about the seed because they're not going to get a harvest out of all the grace I'm giving them. Because they didn't say, watch your voice. Because... They didn't make the distinction because the room wasn't right. Sometimes you got to have a breeding ground for miracles. But how are you going to have a breeding without a seeding? And for everyone that keeps prostituting you and pimping us. I can't blame you and not look at me. It's because the room isn't right. Abort yourselves. It's a strong word, but it means that much. Abort yourselves from nouns, people, places, and things that want to draw from your reservoir and add nothing to your overflow. Am I helping anybody so far? Because this type of manipulation causes God to cut you off. You know better. But you keep playing the role. And when your prayers don't get answered and you pray just like you always prayed, the problem is the room isn't right. Why? Because there was an atmosphere you should have set. And it's usually because we think that where we're at at that moment, all we can do is offer, offer in that area. And God has no other place for us. It's almost as if we're trying to get revenge on our destiny. The only time people need revenge is when they feel like I'm not going to ever get another chance for victory in this area in my life ever again. I'll say it again. The only reason why people want revenge is because they feel like this is the only chance I'm going to get to get a win here. And if I don't take that chance now, it's never coming back. Could you do me a favor and I got to get out of here? Would you lift your hands for a moment and just repent before we praise again? Take a moment to repent for thinking small. I'm so glad I got the privilege of being able to go and kick this off because thank God we can only go higher from here. But we can't go anywhere higher until we let and renounce these moments of abuse 
and repent that, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you would have cut me off because I wasn't being a good steward of the glory and the wisdom that you were giving me, and I was casting it among swine. And cleaning their vomit because they don't have training on how to do so. And the depression that comes as a result of that, keep on repenting. The, the depression that comes as a result of that, we're getting some deliverance right now. The depression that comes as a result of that is because the enemy is not there to go, the demons aren't there to go and um, possess you. They're there to oppress you and they urinate depression over you in the atmosphere. Because the room isn't right. There's no roof. There's no coverage. There's no standard. I need you to repent about our standard. Oh, I'm trying to help you. Repent for our standard. Repent that as of now, when I get out of this room, when I get out of this sanctuary, this makeshift room and realm of God right here, right now, I will not lower my standard. The room is not right. And everything that God promised you, he cannot deliver it to you because you won't let him cover you long enough to develop it. You see where I'm going with this? Don't it all make sense now? He won't give him a chance to develop you. You won't get immersed in him so he can't pull you out and hang you up for everyone to see you're trying to figure out why god ain't done it yet it's because you won't stop being negative and you won't immerse yourself in his solution take my yoke upon you learn of me don't just come to the church learn of me for my yoke my zugos it's hebrew for team my team is easy to get along with. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. My burden will show you where to go to get out of it. But the room isn't right. David in Psalm 61 says, when he writes Psalm 61, it's because the backstory is when he starts talking about hear him from the ends of the earth. Dave was king, but he wasn't in his throne. In fact, when he wrote the psalm, he wasn't on his throne. He was running away from his defiant killer son, Absalom. And Absalom had trim, temporarily, he had chased him out away from the throne. And the reason why I needed you to repent for a few moments is because I want you to know that this is the last time somebody's going to chase you away from your throne. If it belongs to you, set the room right. If it belongs to you, then I need you to lift your hands and reach forth. See, I'm trying to close now because I want to get out of here because we got to get back at one. I need you to go and end up going and really pulling, reaching forth, reaching forth and take what is there on the throne because the room wasn't right before. But now that you've repented, you have cleared yourself of any impediment that would stop you from receiving power from God. Power is the ability to acquire what is desired despite resistance. And even with Absalom chasing you, even with Absalom and hunting of you, even with Absalom thinking he has the upper hand, David says, I'll remember to pay my vow to you. And my vow was to set the room right. Through praise. And even if I'm pursued, persecuted, which means chased, but not forsaken, which would mean caught. No matter who chased David, they never caught him. Because he set the room. 
He said, I'll pay my vows. It's Psalm 56, 12 and 13. He said, I'll pay, the, I'll pay my vows to you and I'll praise you even to know. And then he had the nerve to prophesy and say that your king, your servant will live forever. Because once you set the room right, your confidence will change. Once you set the room right, your knowledge will change. Once you set the room right, your communication will change. I got to go now. Lift your hands. And set the room right. There's some rooms that you need to set right. I press toward the mark. The press is for the sprinter. It means that you take determinate and active action. I press toward the mark. And what is the mark anyway? The mark is a door. For the prize of the eye calling. Now that you've repented, there are no limits to your doors. If I had time, Apostle, I'd tell him about the 19th century when people used to build houses. They didn't build houses going this way. They only built houses going up. So they built one room, and then when they were decided to go to another room, they had to build a room on top of it so they could get a different view. Didn't you hear me talk about having a different horizon? If you would just set the room right, ah, your horizon would change. So I need you to set the room right. But how in the world are we going to get it out of the room? We need a door. In Hebrew, it's fatah. And it basically means mouth. And your mouth is the door. There's a correlation between what God says and what he does. So your hands are lifted now because we got, and I thank you for the privilege of helping to springboard this. We're only going to go higher, but you need to set the room right. The room isn't right. And let me share this with you. If you would repent and just go and get another portion of God and take this worship with you for the next six minutes, I need you to go and do it because then the room will be set right for the next level that's about to come. When the word comes out of their mouth, then the room will be set right. And you won't be looking from the same vantage point that you were when you walked in here. You're going to set up another room. Do me a favor. Lift up your hands right now. Open up your mouth and set up another room. Set up another room. Set up another room. Set up another room. This room isn't right. All of the prophecy that God gave you can't fit in this room. I have not seen it. Ear didn't hear it. Has it entered into the heart? You know why? Because the room wasn't right. I need you to expand your room. Ah, Rehoboth, Rehoboth. Can I prophesy right now? Rehoboth, 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 Rehoboth. We believe in declaring the word of the Lord here. Rehoboth, Rehoboth. Open up your mouth and declare Rehoboth. The Lord makes room for me. The Lord makes room for me. The Lord makes room for me. And now that the Lord is making room for you, I need you to open up your mouth and get another door. You need to get out of that room. The only way to get out of that room is to open up your mouth and be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. You staying where you are is wicked because the room isn't right. Change the surrounding. Give myself away. And I'll make room today so you can use me give my oh, oh, oh yeah yeah and I'll make room today I'll make room today so you can use me come on give it give it give me I repent I let it go I renounce it now, Jesus. I give so you, so you get one more time. Give my, 
yeah, 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 I'll make room today. I'll make room. I'll make room today. I'll make, I'll make room today. I'll make room. I'll make room. I'll make room today. Let's worship. Make room. The apostle is coming. Let's make room. Hallelujah. What a profound word. making room today He's 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 making room That was profound in so many different ways and so many different levels. You know, when we go up and worship at Voice of a Dove, like it just goes certain levels. But there's certain places I sit. And certain, even though he's there and he's in the room, I said, we have to go higher. We can't move until we go higher and go up. Because what the enemy did during the pandemic attack people's minds. So this room you're talking about it's a mindset. It's a stronghold on the minds. So that no matter what's declared, no matter what's prophesied, no matter what's decreed, no matter what God has said, people are stuck in a mindset. Fear has gripped. Because the economy is shaking, it's become a mindset. So it's hard for people to now trust God as they did in the past. So that is just a, such a prayer. Father, we cast away every vain imagination and exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Because your word is settled in heaven. We constantly, we constantly hit on the fact to declare the word. Because God's word is settled. It doesn't matter what it seems or looks like, but the word of God is settled. Hallelujah. We thank you for that word. La da, my Father, we thank you for Dr. White. We pray you will continue to bless, strengthen this servant of the Lord. Continue to let his wings soar, God, to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. In every project, God, we thank you for the substance and the finances being put in his hand and double. Hallelujah. Let tell Magarum Belebe Sunday. There's these books that's in your belly that must come out, doctor. It's too much wisdom, too much insight. And you have insight for leaders. Hallelujah. And you said you've been drained for pouring in to people and it has not been reciprocated. But God says, I'm going to continue to pour into you. Set a time, space to release these revelational books that God has given you. Hallelujah. This is going to be a tremendous blessing to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We're going to push back to 130 and 
Our service tonight, we're going to start at 7.30. Hallelujah. So we have a little time. I just want everyone to get a seed. We're going to take seed offering this morning, tonight, and tomorrow. The mid-service, we're not going to take an offering. We're going to take an offering. I want you to sow into this anointing. Sow into these grounds. Hallelujah. Get your largest seed. As you know, we didn't pay for registration. We have four leaders that is going forth. I am not speaking. So we have four leaders that is here pouring into us this entire service. We're here in Baltimore, so you know there is an expense that's coming with being here. So we just want you to give liberally. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We pray that word continue to penetrate and to touch your people. There's more. That word is letting you know there's more that God has for you. But the enemy is trying to cause a blockage in a stronghold. Hallelujah. I'm feeling a prophetic flow. I'm not going to try. <laughs> we got to go into the session with Dr. Tracy. I'm not going to get started. Hallelujah. I'm seeing some things sitting over certain people. Hallelujah. There's so much more. Hallelujah. Prophetess, there's so much more. I see you have been alone with God. God has been talking to you. You're one that loves prayer. You love intercession. You love the presence of God. Hallelujah. And God says, I'm going to take every hurt, every pain, every crushing. God says, every crushing that you have been through has been, yes, you. <laughs> the crushing that you have been through is because of the grace and the oil that God wants to pour out of your life. Because you had had seasons where you was wondering, God, have I missed this moment? Have I missed this season? And God says, you have not missed it. And I see your words being very weighty in people's lives and in women's lives that come to you as a Nicodemus. I see women coming to you in the night season asking for your words of wisdom and asking for your words of prayer and for your counsel. And then, but they turn around and act like you didn't do anything for them, that you didn't speak at all. God says, I'm going to bless you. And I also see a writing, a scribe anointing coming upon you in this season as well. God says, continue to pen down what I give you because it's going to be a blessing. I also see another stream of income that God wants to bless you with. Another stream that he wants to bless you with. So tell him and you're going to get a call from the Caribbean you're going to get a call from the Caribbean they're going to say we have need of you and we have need and God's going to use you mightily in the Caribbean region you can all stand to your feet with your offerings and just pour it on the altar hallelujah we're not going to close out